to say hi to you as we finish this book, The Dark Angel by Meredith Ann Pierce. Still not one of my favorites, but you can hear at the end I stopped complaining as much about it. Um, now, where were we? The Dark Angel has been revived. He has Ariel's heart. Ariel has his heart. And he, of course, feels awful about all of the things that he did and wants to go kill the Lorelei who made him the way that he was. And they're figuring out how to do that right now. The Aberclon is called Undying, and I saw him dead. The, this hoof of his is different from the others. It shines it's just not, and does not crumble like flesh and bone. The lion called it the immortal hoof. The magician laughed his sage's laugh. <laughs> A wise girl, he said, you have solved even this last riddle well. You must take this hoof to Easter Nice. There are priestesses and wise men there, with the learning and the science of the ancient founders. With their magic and machines, they can restore the star horse, call back his soul from the center of the world, give him new flesh and blood and bone. Turning to Irlath, he finished. In a year's time, he will spring full-blown from his immortal hoof and bear you against the vampires in the world. The young man raised his head. Astronis he said softly, slowly. My mother is an Esternese. Ariel returned to him. And you would much like to see her, would you not? He turned his haunted eyes to her. I... No, yes, he admitted at last, closing them. Very much. But how, murmured Ariel, half-turning, how may we cross the sea of dust with neither ship nor sail? Ah, children, but you have a sail! the Duro said, or the makings of one. As for the ship, I think you will need none. Ariel eyed the little mage. A long moment in puzzlement until she saw he was looking at the feathers that covered the floor thickly in the space where the fallen Icarus had lain. My wings, she heard Ariel laugh beside her murmur, as if new hope were stirring in him now. The feathers of my wings. There are thousands of them, enough for the weaving of a great canopy. Ariel said nothing for a moment. She was looking at the little man. "'You will come with us, Tal, will you not?' she asked him, to Estranice. "'That I shall not,' he replied, "'for I have another errand to attend to.' He reached for the vampire's leaden necklace and its charms, tucked them away in his sleeve. "'I must bear this to the water witch,' his, smile, his eyes smiled merrily. "'I shall tell her, Prince, that I am your servant, "'never mentioning, of course, that you are no longer hers. "'I shall say that you have bid me bear the tribute to her.' Straight away, and you will follow in the morn. She's bound to be growing thirsty. It has been many years since she last had souls to drink. But, said Ariel, the vials are empty. They will not be when I give them to her. I think I have fourteen drops of my distillate, not, even, not enough to slay her, or even harm her very much, but enough to give a, her a bitter taste in the mouth. She will kill you, said the prince. I think not, the Duro replied. If I'm careful, I am a little bit of a wizard, and I know a trick or two. Well, children, he nodded to both of them, I must be off, and as for the two of you, there is weaving to be done. Then, before either of them could speak or reach to stay him, he turned swiftly and departed with never a glance behind. Later, it was only much, much later that the bards began to sing of the wonders of his journey to the witch's realm, a journey made both overland and under, and of all the marvels that he met along the way, and further, they sang of his disguises and how he passed the inspection of the witch's many gatekeepers and was at last admitted to her presence, also of how he beguiled her into drinking the fourteen vials, of her great fury when she discovered his deception, then how he slipped by her many traps and finally escaped. But all that is another tale entirely. Suffice it, suffice it to say that it was done. And as for Ariel and her prince, they wove the whole night through, making a great sail to bear them to Esternis. Ariel procured their food from the, lightened, from the lighted caves, but they ate in the castle above, for though the stone halls stretched vast and empty still, they had, their clinging ch they had lost their clinging chill. Irilath worked silently, almost feverishly beside her, helping her to plait the coal-black feathers, when she could persuade him to talk, and, the, 
and that always low and haltingly, it was ever and only of his childhood at the keep, or in long worry on pilgrimage. Often, however, when they slept, his cries awakened her. She rose at once and went into his inner chamber to rouse him from troubled dreams, but he would not speak of them to her, and always turned away. But time will come, she murmured softly, when once more he slept, that you will not turn from me. And left him again in queer and left him again to quieter sleeps. And when at last the dawn arrived, the two of them took their finished canopy out into the garden, which was beginning to bear fruit again for the first time in many years. Then taking their devisement by the corners, they spread it into the air. The plains wind caught it and lifted it like a raven's sail. The west wind swept them aloft, high over the plains, far away on one horizon. Ariel could see the desert of Pendar and offered a silent prayer for the Penderlon, that he might, by this time, be well, be well healed of his wounds. In the other direction she caught sight of the mountains of terrain, at whose foot her village lay. Before them lay the sea of dust, and beyond that, Esternis. And just as they crossed over the plain to above the sea, they heard, far away in the distance behind them, a hideous cry. It came, Ariel realized, from the depths of the dead lake on the desert's edge, and embodied all the raging hate she could have imagined and more. The witch, she heard Irilas behind her breathe. She has discovered the Duro's trick, and that I am lost to her. Talb, said Ariel, listening to that furious scream. I hope he slipped safe away, if she should take him. But her companion shook his head. No, he answered quietly with the first hint of calm. True hope, she had heard from him with the first hint of calm true hope she had heard from him since his awakening. I think we need not fear for him. The scream of the white witch rose louder, shriller, and ended in a shriek that caused the very air to shudder. Then, as its echoes rebounded from the steeps and gradually died into silence, Ariel looked up at the sail blown full above them and saw, as the last of the Lorelei's magic left it, that it had turned white. And so, on a throw of pure white feathers, she and her chieftain's son crossed over the sea of dust, alighting later that same day at Esternis. And that's the end of the Dark Angel. Um, I guess I'll read you the rest of that series. It's a trilogy. Um, again, I don't love it, but if you liked my reading of it, let me know, and uh, yeah, we'll see about picking it up in the second book, uh, Gathering of Gargoyles. My copy has the whole trilogy inside of it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next book.